This is chapter 34 of PAX, our last one. Peter held what was left of the fox high above his head, and they called his name again. PAX! And from above the mill, an answering bark. Hope rose in his throat, but no, he must have just wished for that bark. He scanned the ridge line anyway, a flash of red, a white-tipped brush. A fox appeared in an open spot and rose on his back legs, on two back legs, and looked straight at him. Peter pressed the fox leg into his father's hand. Bury this. Then he grabbed his other crutch and turned for the hill. Wait, Peter, you have to understand, it's my duty. Peter pointed to the fox on the ridge. He thumped his chest so hard it hurt. That's mine. His father shouted to him about the wires. He shouted at him to stop. Peter saw the wires he pulled over them, but he did not stop because there was only his fox waiting on the spine of the hill and the distance between them. Over and over he planted his crutches and swung through, closing that distance. When he was almost there, his shirt dried from the wind and then soaked again in sweat. He stopped and called. Pax tossed his head and then bounded away toward the trees. On four legs, Peter was sure of it. Pax was unharmed. Peter followed it, but then again, he just as he neared him, Pax broke away, galloping into the trees. Peter followed again. He didn't begrudge Pax this testing game. He had broken his pet's trust. Why wouldn't he be skittish? Why wouldn't he need to assure himself of Peter's loyalty now? For as long as Pax wanted, Peter would obey. It was fair punishment. Through the trees, a hundred long yards and a hundred more, Peter followed. And then he broke into a clearing. The fox stood and waited, and Peter reached him. He offered his hand. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Pax locked Peter's gaze and then took his wrist in his jaws. Peter's pulse jumped against the bracelet of his teeth, pressed just tight enough to claim him, just tight enough to call Peter's own wildness. Two, but not two. Pax released Peter's wrist and tore across the clearing toward a crooked tree. Circling the tree was a pair of coyotes. Pax lunged at the taller one. No, Pax, come back! The tree was too far away, but fifty yards at least. Peter dug his crutches into the turf and piked hard. When he was a dozen yards away, he saw the coyotes' treed quarry. Another fox, bright, furred with a sharp and delicate face, a vixen. She was bleeding from a gash on her haunch, and instead of a thick brush, she thrashed the blackened whip of her tail. The vixen swiped at, at the coyotes from above, taunting him, and Pax snapped at the other's flank. Peter saw that the foxes were a team, and they were no match for the coyotes. Peter barreled for the tree, shouting that the coyotes ignore him. The taller of the two spun around and sank his teeth into Pax's neck, and Pax shrieked. Peter roared in fury. He braced himself on one crutch and leaned back and sidearmed the other heavy with its white ash bat as hard as he could, aiming in between the two coyotes. Both of them wheeled around at the outrage, while the tree rang with the bat's blow. The tall one sprinted away and disappeared into the brush. The other one bolted a dozen yards and stopped and turned back. He eyed Peter and bared his fangs. Peter bared his teeth back. Pax growled at his side. Hackles raised, ready to spring. Peter swept his second crutch over his head and roared again, and Pax snarled at the pale coyote, reared back in surprise. He turned and crashed out of the clearing. Peter clutched the tree. He slid to the ground, shaking. Instantly, Pax was on him, wriggling under his neck, licking his face, sniffing his broken foot, nuzzling his face again. Peter wrapped his arms around his fox and pressed his face into the piney-smelling fur. You're okay, you're okay, you're okay. The vixen leaped over them to the ground and disappeared into a juniper scrub, ringing the clearing. Pax sat up and barked to her from Peter's lap. After a moment, Peter saw a black muzzle point out from the brush. Out came a skinny fox, about the size Pax had been at eight months, blinking in the sunlight. He stumbled into the clearing on three legs. The vixen reemerged. She paced and yipped at the runty little fox, shooting where he looks at Peter. Pax squirmed out of Peter's arms and barked again. The three-legged fox took a few steps closer. Its limp was so awkward, Peter realized he must have lost the, only leg, recent, the leg only recently. And then he made the connection. 
He offered his hand and called softly. Hesitatingly, his gaze darted between Peter and Pax. The little fox hobbled over, and he tucked his head under Pax's chin. Peter extended a finger. The injured fox allowed him to brush his neck for an instant, then hurried back to the safety of the vixen side. Together, the two foxes looked, unex looked expectantly at Pax, and then they melted into the underbrush. And Peter understood. His fox belonged to them, and they belonged to Pax, inseparable. All this way he'd come, all this way. Peter got to his knees. He placed his hand on Pax's back and felt the muscles jump. Peter looked around. The woods looked dangerous now, full of coyotes and bears, and soon humans at war. He looked down at his fox, still straining to follow his new family. Go. It's okay. It wasn't, though. The pain scoured him hollow and left him without breath like a kick to the heart. He pulled his hand away because Pax would feel that, feel a pain that deep and he wouldn't leave. Go? Pax shot away toward the brush line and then he turned back to look at his boy. Peter felt tears roll down his face, but he didn't wipe them away. Pax sprang back and he whimpered, licking at the tears. Peter brushed him down. He found the crutch and levered himself upright. No. No, I don't want you to stay. I'll always leave the porch door open, but you have to go. Pax looked toward the brush and then back at his boy's face. Peter dug into his pocket and pulled out the toy and he lifted it. Pax raised his head, his eyes trained on Peter's hand. And Peter hurled the plastic soldier, soldier under the, over the brush and into the woods, as far away as he could. And the last page says, sometimes the apple rolls very far from the tree. And that is the end of Pax. Uh, if you liked this book, there is a, a sequel that has come out. And you can look it up. I'm sure your library would carry it. Okay. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it.